Brian, I wonder if you are getting into the Christmas spirit. I am so into the Christmas spirit that I have become very friendly inappropriately with a reindeer. Man, Brian, you are into the Christmas spirit. <laughs> I'm into Christmas everything. But you want to know what I'm really into? What's that, man? I'm into this lady that we've heard about on the podcast, Miss Fukushima herself, Miss Chaos of Cairo, Amanda Kiernan, the lead singer for Order of Chaos and Into Eternity, both great Canadian metal bands. Well, man, you're in luck because I have a Christmas gift to share with you. That's right, an interview with the one and only Amanda Kiernan. Amanda was gracious enough to speak with me recently. We covered a wide range of topics. She talks with me about how she got into music originally, how she became front woman for these two incredible Canadian metal bands, how she's developed the attitude she has on stage, and what we can expect from her in the future. Dude, she is the consummate heavy metal woman, the sex witch, the princess of Cairo. Let's hear what she's got to say. Let's get right to it. Our interview with metal vocalist Amanda Kiernan. It's a real thrill for me to be joined today by phone with Amanda Kiernan, vocalist for two great Canadian metal bands, The Order of Chaos and Into Eternity. Amanda, thank you so much for taking uh, the time to join us today on the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, I want to start out by just asking kind of, you know, how you got started, if you could share a little bit about your background, kind of where you grew up and how you initially got into music. Well, uh, a long, long time ago, I used to play acoustic guitar with my stepdad. He taught me stuff like the Beatles and uh, all classic rock. And then uh, I was actually extremely shy and didn't at all want to sing in front of anybody. I wouldn't even sing in front of my own mother. And then one day, my sister met a man, and they dated for a couple of years, and that happened to be Timothy Prevost, who is now the drummer for the Order of Chaos. Uh, he started sneaking me into, well, because I was underage, he started sneaking me into metal shows <laughs> and teaching me about everything. Actually, he took me to Damage Plan, which at the time, I didn't know oh. how, how important they were. And then I became a huge fan of Pantera, so now I think... Tim Prevost for bringing me there because I got to see Dimebag for the very last time. And uh, after that, my sister tried to convince Tim, well, why does why does uh, why don't you get my sister to sing for your band? And he's like, ah, could she really do it? I don't think she could do it. And I lied and said I was a metal singer, which I was <laughs> not at all, and I was not experienced. But I got drunk one night with my buddies, and they all tried to teach me how to scream the day before the audition, and. So then I went in and I sang Ozzy, Bark at the Moon, and Megadeth, Tornado of Souls, and somehow pulled it off. And the band really enjoyed me. And then ever since then, it's just, you know, it's just been been with them for seven years now. And they've taught me everything. But for a very long time, like, you know, everybody always says, oh, I can't do that, I can't. Well, I didn't know how to either. And even today, I'm still learning different ways how to growl properly and stuff. So, yeah, I just kind of fluked and got in it somehow and got lucky, and they said yes, and started recording albums and playing lots of shows and actually opened up for Godsmack. It was a, a contest here in Edmonton. Wow. That was huge and uh, absolutely incredible, and I think that's one of the things that brought us to where we are today for sure. So once you had the opportunity, what what else did you do? Did you get any formal training, or what what did you do to kind of uh, consolidate your, your your skills? Okay, yeah, sorry, I get off topic a lot. Um, I definitely started. Uh, I went to Grant McEwen and went and took music theory, which very soon I just got frustrated because I'm not good with numbers, so I kind of stopped. <laughs> but I took various. Uh, different vocal lessons from different people because I believe in you learn from every single person, right? So I had like 
five different vocal teachers at once just to get the diversity and try to learn as much as I could from each and every one of them. I also read a lot of books on metal singing and Bruce Dickinson, what he does and his practices and warm-ups. And I also picked up the DVD that's been in streaming from Melissa Cross. I'm sure you've all heard of that one. And I also did a woman's choir, which was very interesting. It was me and a bunch of old ladies, but it was an ex extremely <laughs> amazing experience. <laughs> We sang in Norwegian, and it was it was just really interesting and fun. So, and I'm always I'm always doing side projects, always doing rap and hip hop and whatever. Like, so I've I've always just been getting inspired by each each individual, no matter what. And so I just kept taking lessons and kept practicing every day with the order because we practice try and practice every single night. So. <laughs> We just uh, we just got to work. We just tried to work really, really hard, and I can't believe all the things we've done, how far we've come. But that's great. And so, with all that work put in, you got the opportunity to join into Eternity. And I know you've answered this question many times, but can you give us uh, our listeners a brief overview of how you got that gig and what that has been like? That that was uh, honestly a dream come true. Uh, I was hanging out with my friend and, well, actually, Brian Newberry, the drummer from Into Eternity, he's been my friend for 10 years. He, he lives in Edmonton also. He's a, a huge part of the metal scene in Edmonton. And uh, so he got the gig of Into Eternity the year before I did, and we were all excited going to his shows and stuff. And then a year later, I was hanging out with my friend, and he's like, yeah, Into Eternity is looking for a vocalist. And... I honestly, I didn't, there was no thought in my mind. It was a reaction. I picked up the phone and I called Brian. And I said, hey, man, like, please, please, can you get me audition? He's like, you think you can do it? And everybody around me was like, you can't do it. You can't do it. And I don't know what happened to me. Something inside me snapped and I locked myself in my bedroom for 10 months. <laughs> and I didn't come out of there until... I could at least try, and this is another thing, with the order, I couldn't growl. Well, with this band, I, I've never done falsettos. I've never even tried. I, I'm still learning how, but I locked myself in that room until I figured out at least how to hit the note properly. And even when I would hit the note, I'd be so excited, and then Stu Block would just go higher and higher. And <laughs> that inhuman voice of his, it, like, it was very challenging, but I took the challenge, and I... Honestly, the second I picked up that phone and made that phone call, it's all fallen into place so deep, not effortlessly, but it's a lot of work, but it just seems so effortless. Like, we all just have way too much fun together. We're such a great unit, and we're all fun and happy, loving, and it's just, we have too much fun. We'll jam 10-hour days, <laughs> but it'll be just friends playing music, like, it seems like a lot of work, but when I'm with those guys, it's not work. It's just a good time. So definitely a dream come true for me. It was very easy for me because I already knew most of the songs. I just had to learn how to hit the notes. And, yeah, now the rest is history. I'm, I'm absolutely in love with that band, and it's a dream come true every single day. I'm very thankful. And I know you've been talking to Tim Ross because we speak every day, so... That's right. We uh, yeah. had an opportunity to speak with him on, on Saturday. Saturday uh, yeah. great, just a great guy. I tell you what, so well, down to earth. My idol. Like, I looked up to that guy, and I was so nervous with them at first because I was like, oh, my God, into eternity. Like, for me, that's, I know it's different because everybody has different favorite bands. But for me, into eternity was, used to be my, or still is, my one of my favorite bands. And when I broke the ice with those guys, it was just so easy and so funny. And I'm really a silly person, very, very crazy and hyper. And I was kind of worried to see, like, how they would react with me because I'm always me and I'll never change, right? But uh, <laughs> magically, we all, like, I don't know, we're the, we have way too much fun. We just bonded instantly. And instantly, it was like love at first sight. It's just been an amazing right. experience. <laughs> Well, you mentioned earlier Stu, and I, I, I'm a big fan of Judas Priest, and of course every no one knows the story of you know Tim Ripper Owens, who went yeah. from being a fan in a cover band mm -hmm. to Priest frontman, but having to replace a legendary singer in Rob Halford, 
you know, I, I wonder, you know, how you feel uh, in having to replace what is somewhat a legendary singer in Stu Block, and, yeah. and also a little bit about what it's like going from that fan experience and still being a fan, but also having to be a, a professional and part of the musical unit. Right. Well, uh, I will definitely correct you on the replace, because Stu Block, even though ever the whole world thinks that he's no longer in the band, that man lives in Regina, and he is a part of that family more than anybody. They are tight. He, when he's in town, he's at our jams. He's at our shows. He even comes up and sings with us sometimes. Like, so he's definitely a part of the family. Everybody thinks like, oh, he left, they're gone. Like, that's not the case. Like, and when Ice Earth actually is coming to Regina, all those boys will be front row center supporting their singer. Right? And he's also in the new album, you know. So he's a part oh, of it. He's just great. a rock star now. So he's, uh, <laughs> he's you know, with uh, what's his name? He's just doing lots of stuff with Ice Earth right now. But uh, to replace, not replace him, to fill his shoes, yeah, it's extremely intimidating and exciting and nerve-wracking. Uh, but it's, it's absolutely amazing because when that man came and tried to teach me, just for two days he came to jam and just showed me tiny little things. And it, and it opened up my voice, like even the Order of Chaos, heard it you know the second I came back from playing with him too you could just tell how my voice has grown and how much I've learned even from Stu Block like what an amazing inhuman singer that man is phenomenal and he has so much control in his vocals and he taught me one word one thing that stuck out is he said own every word and you know and he said like you know when you're singing severe emotional distress like you know I, I know I'm not suicidal but when you're singing that song <laughs> but you got to get into it though it's not that I think suicidal but when I'm on stage and that song's going before my vocals I literally am looking at my arms and I'm picturing just like blood running down I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get into that emotion you know because obviously yeah. like some people in the world can relate to that you know so I really sure. Every every song I try and get into the emotion of it, and and I can also because I've been such a huge fan that it's easy for me to get into it. I've been listening to them since I was 17, so and I love Tim Roth, like the way he writes. He's an extremely talented man. That whole band is. And yeah, that's great. Uh, I guess I fall off on the topic. Sorry. <laughs> No, you're fine. You're fine. But I I do want to go back to the Order of Chaos. You know, I know you guys have been pretty busy. Last year, you released some new music with the Sex Switch EP. Yeah. You did a tour of Europe with Hellstar. And then this past year, you went with, back for more European dates. We actually and also so, opened up for Ripper Owens, actually, one night. Oh, did you? We did, yeah. That was really cool. So it's funny how you mentioned him. But anyway, oh, go yeah. on. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, I've, no, I've had a chance to meet him. What, what a great guy, so down to earth, and yeah. Really, yeah, I only had like a moment with him, and it was just kind of short. So. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh no, it was, all, it was all good. I was just like, it's an honor to open up for you. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, okay. Oh. Man, I'll, I'll leave you alone, man. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, anyway, I, I wonder if you could share a little bit about the fan reaction to the Sex Witch release and the tours and what we can expect to hear from the Order of Chaos perhaps in 2014. Well, uh, we've definitely grown so much. And the two European tours were absolutely amazing. The reactions we were getting in the hospitality is absolutely overwhelming at first. The crowd really doesn't know what to think of anybody and me especially. And then after, I think after the whole show, when we get off the stage, they come to us, you know, metal brother to brother. And everybody seems to be really liking it, especially a lot of record labels down there. And actually, Europe kind of just like changed my whole performance. I came back to Europe and had, a, we played one show back in Edmonton a week from coming from Europe, and my sister, who always and forever is very uh, honest with me about my performances, she just came up to me and said, what the f*** happened to you over there? Like, <laughs> you know, because that's the thing, we were on the bus, and the only movie we watched was The Doors, which I've seen that movie a hundred times, but just where I was in Europe for the first time in my life, and I'm following my dreams, it's just, 
the next day after I watched that movie, I just, I, every time I go on stage now, I meditate before, and then I let the music completely take a hold. So, yeah, I get uh, a lot of crazy reactions from people. They go a bit nuts because I'm starting to roll around on the ground and jump up and down and jump off things and hurt myself and get in the crowd and just, Right. No, that's well, raw, ask, rock and roll. Let me ask you about that in particular, that, that issue. I've seen <laughs> videos of your performances with both Into Eternity and The Order of Chaos where you literally do jump into the crowd and start <laughs> headbanging with the audience. You know, yes. Most people in the, in the audience are fantasizing about being on stage. What is it that possesses you to jump from the stage back down into the crowd and join them? Well, because, first of all, it's... Those, that crowd, they're the reason why you're there. Any musician, the only reason why any of us do this is for that crowd. And the crowd needs to know just how special they are. Each and every one of that person who's in that venue, I try my hardest to meet every single one of them and to make a friend out of them and a memory with them. And I love getting off the stage because on the stage is <laughs> bliss, excuse my language. But I like to you know, make it, I, I love, I've always been, I like to be, I don't know the right word for this, I'm always out, out of the, uh, I just like to be the outcast, you know, I love to get in the crowd with my fans because they're the reason why we're here, they're the reason why we do this, like, you know, and we yeah. rough it out just for those people and I love getting down there because I've also, I'm, I'm a fan of lots of bands, and my favorite thing to do on the weekend is go to a local show and rock out, and there's no better feeling than to get pushed around, beer in your hand, and, <laughs> you know, getting kicked in the head and watching the mosh pit destroy, like, it's actually hilarious, and even when I'm at a show, you'll you'll see me watching the crowd more than the, the band, just because they're just, they're all amazing. The crowd... That's that's what it, what concerns me about live music nowadays. You know, that's the best part. So where is everybody? You <laughs> know, but uh, it's all amazing, and I just want always want to get out into the crowd and let those guys know that they're the reason why I do this. They're the only reason, and I'm sending all my love. And I just I get in the crowd, and every, I don't choreograph any show at all. I just go with what feels right. I we Order of Chaos played a show on Saturday night, and it was the first time in my life at this bar that we played all the time at that I jumped off the stage and I hopped on the bar and I don't mean I I don't like to be disrespectful to the bar, but I cleaned it up after but I smashed the shit around because <laughs> I don't like I actually buy my own things to smash because I just feel that it's disrespectful to tear it like terrorize the stage. Like, after I get off the stage, people, the sound guys and all that are probably just like, what the f*** did you do up here, you know? Like, <laughs> there's water everywhere and mud and broken s***. Like, so I try to do my part to break my own things and to clean up after myself. But it's just, I think, whatever happened to singer from Led Zeppelin and humping his mic stand and Jim Morrison rolling all over the ground, like, I want to bring that back and... Fans need to know that they're the most important and why they're there, you know? That's interesting. Even though you're in, you know, with Into Eternity, certainly a very progressive modern metal band, yeah. you really look back to those roots of rock and roll for your inspiration, don't you? Well, I, I actually, this is a, a question I'm asked a lot, and I know this sounds really silly, but I'm actually always genuine about this. My inspiration comes from each and every single person every day, all the time. Yes, musicians, when we went on tours in Europe, like, changed my life. You you see vicious rumors every single night for a whole month. Uh, you'd think you would get bored, but I wasn't. I was front row center every night, learning every single night, like, and then you take what you learn and you bring it every night. It, you progress and you grow, and it's an amazing thing, you know? And so it doesn't matter even if you're a musician. Even you, like just every single person inspires me every day. My mom, my sister, photographers, kids, you know, excited to keep going day by day, meeting more people and learning, trying to give That's everybody great. what they want. <laughs> 
Sure. Well, at, from the from the fan perspective, that's much appreciated. We love that. For people who want to support you by purchasing music or merchandise from the bands that you're in, you know, can you give us a little information about how they can do so? Well, definitely at our shows and stuff. But uh, you can go any any uh, both bands are on uh, Bandcamp.com on that website there, mm-hmm. and we also have the Order of Chaos dot com. Or .ca. I'm pretty sure we got a new one. The Order of Chaos dot com. Dot .ca. I, is it dot .ca? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. We switched it up. It's a little unorganized right now. We're working on Order of Chaos is working on our third new album, and we're getting rid of all of our merch so we can come in with brand new merch. And this time, mm-hmm. it's not just going to be silly shirts. It's going to be patches and even chip panties and bathing suits. But I'm going to go really, <laughs> I'm going to go really crazy with the merchandise. So if you go on the order of chaos.ca or into eternity.com, I'm sure on there definitely. And you can always go on iTunes to download all that music and which of course I would want you not to download it for free, but <laughs> some most well, people no, we, are doing that. <laughs> we want to be encouraging people to support your yes. bands, both yes. into eternity and the order of chaos. Purchase that music, purchase that merchandise to support these bands so that they can keep being out there uh, yeah, that's what it's all performing about. the metal. That is what it's all about. Uh, we definitely can't stop anybody from going on iTunes and whatnot, but we have uh, the few that purchase music, and we thank you. They're the, they're the ones keeping it alive, you know? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to seeing you live sometime soon and uh, getting you to sign my Buried in Oblivion CD. Definitely. Oh, man. I, that's you don't know how what a trip it is to find those CDs every time when someone asks me. I just call my sister right after, and I'm like, Jenna! <laughs> this is insane! What is going on? F***ing dream. <laughs> yeah, that's I can't great. wait to come down to Kentucky, right? That's where you're from? Excellent. Yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, or, or cool. anywhere close by uh, Nashville. or yep. Actually, was. I was slated to see you guys in Evansville. I know that didn't work out, but I know you guys will be back through there at some oh, point. Oh, we will. So. We, you guys have no idea how much, in, well, me and into a tournament, we all just love each and every one of you. Hospitality we get on tour is ridiculous, actually, and it's amazing. I love, 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 love music scene. Great. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for joining us on the Great Metal Debate Podcast. I've, I've so enjoyed getting to talk with you today. Thank you so much for having me. Brian, what did you think about this uh, interview with Amanda Kiernan? Man, let me tell you what. I, the, what struck me the most, the thought that came to my mind the most as I listened to this interview was how genuine this girl is. I mean, uh, I don't want to say sweet, but she is extremely, well, she's down to earth, dude. Absolutely. Man, you, you don't hear this in the interview. She was in a bar somewhere, and it was uh, really loud and busy. She actually went into the ladies' room where it would be quiet, where we could have a better connection, and I, I could hear her better for the interview. I mean, that just tells you how uh, kind-hearted and, and generous she was to take that time literally sitting in the ladies' room to speak with us. <laughs> Dude, that, that's above and beyond dedicated to the cause of metal. And well, I mean, you hear that throughout her. I think she got a little bit of metal bulldog in her. You know, she talked about uh, when she she faced her doubters or she she thought about her doubters. She locked herself in a room and and started perfecting her craft. That's uh, that's pretty intense. I like that. Man, I'm a huge fan of individuals like Amanda. People who come in, they're not the first player on the field. They're following somebody up somebody who's been successful, right. and they know that whatever they do is going to be scrutinized and that they're going to have a lot of doubters, and they're willing to prove those doubters wrong. That's one of the things I love about Amanda. Yeah, well, she gave Stu Block his due, and she said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to come right in, and I'm going to, I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to uh, make my own place. And you can hear it when she sings. She is vocally versatile. I mean, she has an intense range growling, screaming. She's got the vocal range to do this. Brian, I said it on our very first podcast. I really love her vocal attitude and, and just the, the sound that she brings uh, when we listen to that first Order of Chaos song. I've become a fan of, of both bands, and, and she has a different style for both bands. 
haunting is a word that's used a lot to describe lyrics and vocals, but I truly think that's something that they hit. They have sort of a haunting, melodic tone that is, uh, well, it, it, it comes out in the form of a good song. Hey, Brian, you know that I'm a huge fan of female metal vocalists, but certainly Amanda Kiernan brings something something very different than, you know, like a uh, the, the operatic style. I mean, she brings a, a rawness, an aggressiveness, I, I might almost say a viciousness uh, with her vocals that I really appreciate. She does. I mean, she has the metal attitude that we talk about sometimes, and yet she has the, the, the feminine side also. I love my reindeer. <laughs> Brian, I want to remind our listeners that they can stream or download the Great Metal Debate podcast audio on SoundCloud.com. Brian and I are going to have more new podcast episodes for you guys in the coming weeks. Plus, we've got additional interviews with metal artists. And don't forget to keep up to date and interact with us by going to the Great Metal Debate Facebook page. So there you have it, the Amanda Kiernan interview. Great singer, great person, great girl, two great bands. Be sure to check them both out and join us at the Great Metal Debate. We'll see you all next time on the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Hey,